With Argus looming ominously overhead, it's finally about time we take the fight to the Legion and help our friends at the Army of Light. And if you're anything like me, you're thinking, hey, that Turalian guy has a pretty cool transmog. I should roll a Paladin. They have the best transmogs after all. And if that's the case, then you've come to the right place, because in this video, I'm going to teach you how to Paladin it up like the best of them. The first thing to learn is that our talents are incredibly boring, and you're probably going to run a build that looks something like this 99% of the time. Our go-to talent on our level 15 tier is Final Verdict, which increases the damage of our Templar's Verdict by 20%, Divine Storm by 10%. Execution Sentence is a nice burst of holy damage after about 5 seconds, although it is dispellable. I have noticed though that healers are not particularly trigger happy when it comes to dispelling this, so you do have a little bit of time to maybe put them in a CC and line up the actual triggering of Execution Sentence with the rest of your damage and wings for a nice little bit of on-demand burst that's really hard to heal through. Consecration sounds really cool, and it looks pretty cool, and it reminds me of Hearthstone, but it kind of sucks because no one ever wants to stand in it in PvP, so it's kind of pointless. The Fires of Justice reduces the cooldown of Crusader Strike by one second, and it gives you a chance for your next spender to cost one less Holy Power. This isn't as good in PvP as you don't have 100% uptime, and if you're sitting on two stacks of Crusader Strike, then you're wasting half the effect of this. You should go with Zeal or Greater Judgment instead. Zeal is just a flat damage increase over Crusader Strike. It does about 60k more damage and gives you a stacking buff that causes your next Zeal to cleave additional targets. I don't recommend running this if you're playing with Hunter or Mage or anything with breakable CCs that could easily be broken by just using your main rotation. Greater Judgment is similar to Zeal in that it's just a flat DPS increase. It causes your Judgment to have 100% crit chance on targets above 50% health. This is really good for AoE and RPGs when you want to just put that debuff on everyone and spin the flag. Unfortunately, this talent does have the same tendency to break CCs, albeit less frequently than Zeal. I also recommend taking this talent if you're going against, say, a Mage or a Hunter or anything that you're going to have a hard time staying on top of and you're not going to be able to take full advantage of Zeal. Fist of Justice reduces the cooldown of your Hodge by 2.5 seconds per Holy Power spent. This makes it possible to DR your own Hodge, which is actually pretty silly. Bam, a dr Hodge. Repentance and Blinding Light are both pretty bad, although they're even worse when you consider how good Fist of Justice is. For a level 60 tier, we're going to want to go with Blade of Wrath most of the time. The proc on Blade of Wrath is pretty ridiculous, like it could proc right away at the start of a fight and you just instantly have 4 Holy Power, you zeal, you have 5, you go into your spender rotation, it's silly. When all the stars align, Virtue's Blade can actually hit for a ridiculous amount of damage, and I would actually recommend this if you're going against a team where you're being kited all the time and you're not able to auto attack to benefit from Blade of Wrath, as the damage it does is pretty ridiculous. Divine Hammer was recently nerfed, however it is still a DPS increase on two or more targets. You could still run this talent in AoE to do a truly godly amount of damage. This talent is also really nice for base sitting as it has 100% uptime and there's no visual buff to indicate when the buff is about to fall off. Say if you're waiting for a rogue to come up and sap you or a druid, you could just stand on the flag with your divine hammer and the radius of the effect is actually much larger than the visual animation would, uh, would suggest. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten rogues and druids and anyone's stealth really out of stealth and it's just amazing. For a level 75 tier we're going to want to go with Just Cause Vengeance as it synergizes really well with Divine Purpose and gives you a good amount of sustained healing and it also does about as much damage as the Templar's Verdict. It does slightly less damage if you are spec into Final Verdict. It does about the same if you're spec into anything else. A quick note I forgot to mention about JV is that if you use it on a stunned target it does double damage however that's baseline it could still crit on top of that and do an additional double damage which is four times as much damage as it would have originally done on a non-stunned target this could very quickly equal ridiculous amounts of damage if the stars align 
The 35% physical damage reduction on eye for an eye is good against melee cleaves for obvious reasons. And the 150k retaliatory damage is pretty good too. However, if there's any kind of spell damage and it's not just all melee, you should probably stick with Just Cause Vengeance. With my PvP template active on this dummy here, Word of Glory heals for about 300k, which is about the same as my Just Cause Vengeance. However, Just Cause Vengeance does not have a cooldown, so that pretty much makes it better than Word of Glory. The only difference being this is 3 Holy Power and does no damage, and this is 5 Holy Power and does about as much damage as a Templar's Verdict. You could think of Justicar's Vengeance as actually being a Templar's Verdict for 3 Holy Power and a Word of Glory for 3 Holy Power combined into one convenient global that actually saves you Holy Power. For a level 90 talent, you can't go wrong with Divine Intervention as it has a 20% heal, cheat death mechanic, automatically procs bubble, and reduces the cooldown of bubble to 4 minutes from 5 minutes. By far, the biggest weakness of the Rep Paladin is still mobility. However, if you try to remedy this by specking it to Cavalier, be prepared to be disappointed. The 45 second cooldown on Divine's Deed means that if you actually want to use both charges, you're going to have to wait a full minute and a half before you're able to use the second charge again. Which means you might as well just spec Divine Intervention and keep the one pony for practically the same amount of mobility. Judgment of Light is an apparent copy-paste job from Wrath of the Lich King back when we actually had like three different judgments. Unfortunately, it looks like Blizzard forgot to buff the Wrath Era numbers, as the measly 5000 healing it generates fails to keep up with Legion Era health pools that could easily reach 5 million. Divine Purpose is our go-to level 100 talent, as previously mentioned it synergizes really well with Jessica's Vengeance for spammable damage and healing. Crusade will do more damage than your regular wings after a few seconds of buildup. However, when people see you descend from the heavens in your usual Angel of Death style, they're prone to pop defensive cooldowns or CC or just run away, and you're really unable to get the surprise effect of just hitting wings and doing an instant 35% more damage before they pop all their defensives and run away. Holy Wrath was nerfed into the ground quite a long time ago, and it hasn't really been viable ever since. For our PvP talents, you generally can't go wrong with Gladiator's Medallion, it's your default trinket. In PvP, if you're trying to bop or put a Blessing of Sanctuary on a healer, and you are also in a CC, it's really hard to beat that on-demand trinket to get your healers out and just continue playing the game. Adaptation can be really good in twos when you don't have to worry about trinket sanking out a healer. However, I don't recommend this in threes ever because you lose that benefit. And also, I never recommend using this against rogues because it will automatically trinket sap and make you look like an idiot. Relentless is all the rage if you're an orc. It can also be pretty good if you're a human because you have every man for himself to trinket out of stuns anyway. And you also have your Ashbringer auto trinket right here. Unbreakable will every two minutes. So if you really want to, you could go relentless. However, I still recommend using Gladiator's Medallion most of the time. For the next road down, you want to go reinforce armor for the flat 10% health increase. However, if you're fighting exclusively melee, then you could go with sparring and get the increased damage reduction. For solo play and random BGs, I usually like to go with Law and Order as the more consistent slow on Blade of Justice, which also procs and you can slow again, is really the only thing keeping you on target as we don't have mobility outside of that and our default slow is on a 30 second cooldown. You can alternatively spec into Jurisdiction which gives your Hodge a 20 yard range. This is particularly good in arenas or RPGs when you want to stun a target who's really far away, but you don't have the mobility to run over there while slowing. Unbound Freedom actually has a bit of misleading text. It claims it increases your movement speed by 30% when you use Hand of Freedom, but actually it increases Mage's movement speed by 30% when they steal your Hand of Freedom. As everyone knows, Hand of Freedom is not a Paladin ability, it is a Mage ability. Holy Ritual is my default talent for solo play, as you're constantly applying blessings to yourself and the additional healing from the applying and removing of blessings over a fight can add up over time. For RBGs, however, you're usually going to want to run the Fleet Essence, as it spreads 20% of the healing you receive to all allies within 20 yards. This is really good for those melee pits and RBGs when you're just kind of standing on the base or an objective and just spinning around, everyone's taking damage, everyone's getting spammed heals, just pads the meters with a little bit of extra healing that actually helps everyone stay alive. Blessing of Sanctuary is going to be your default choice on this tier, 
as being able to get your healer out of stun spheres and silence every 45 seconds as well as reduce the duration of incoming effects by 60% for 5 seconds after the effect has been applied to them is the entire reason we get invited to Cupid Cleave in the first place. Vengeance Aura can maybe be good in RBGs because it takes a really long time to stack up now as you only actually have 2 blessings to put on anyone. I would usually keep this in RBGs or even in solo play because you could preemptively use a Hand of Sanctuary on yourself to reduce the duration of incoming crowd control by 60%. You could do some pretty MLG outplays by preemptively predicting a stun and using it right before it happens. Alternatively, you could run Seraphim's Blessing for solo play as a free flash of light every 15 seconds after a nearby target has dropped to 40% health isn't too bad. If I keep my PvP template active and make sure Concordance isn't buffing my healing gear, it's like a 400k flash of light, 600k crit. It's pretty good, however, keep in mind that if you are running Blessing of Sanctuary for those sick MLG preemptive plays, it will heal you for a combined 200k non crit from the benefit of Holy Ritual. Lawbringer has been drastically changed since the last patch. It no longer extends the duration of your Judgment debuff. It now, however, grants a completely separate debuff, which you could see here in red, that lasts 45 seconds, and when you judge the target again, it will do 5% of their total health and extra holy damage. This also affects targets of your Judgment's Cleave as well, so if you're specced into Greater Judgment, you could affect up to 4 targets with this ability. The wording on Divine Punisher can be a little bit confusing, as I've met several Paladins who believe that the 3 holy power generated comes from every Judgment after the initial Judgment. However, what it actually does is it gives you 3 holy power every other Judgment. So if I open with Judgment, I won't get 3 holy power. The second judgment will however give me 3 holy power, the third judgment will not, and the fourth judgment will. While you can work this into your rotation with some extra effort, I don't believe the extra 3 holy power every 18 seconds is really worth it. Hammer of Reckoning has quickly become a personal favorite of mine, however I will point out right away that it will not do more overall damage than Lawbringer over just about any period of time. 6 seconds of wings just so happens to be the perfect amount of time to kill someone in a hodge, or at the very least force some defensives out of them. The 1 minute cooldown lines up well with Wake of Ashes and Hammer of Justice, and I'm sure many of you have hard switched to a healer in the past with your actual wings and just killed them in a stun. This lets you do that more frequently, and it has an insane amount of kill potential. Fake wings, try and get some cooldowns. Yeah, he, he just used Divine Purpose, or Divine Protection. Kicked him, okay. he's freaking and out. he's used Wings, too. I'm going to hodge him in a second here, and then he's going to die. No! I was death gripped! I can't life grip you. I'm rooted. You Stunned. He's dead. Another interesting thing you could do with Hammer of Reckoning if you're also specced into Crusade is at the very end of Crusade, when it's about to fall off, you use Hammer of Reckoning and all the stacks you've built up from your actual Crusade will transfer over to the 12 seconds of your Hammer of Reckoning Crusade. A popular misconception I've seen throughout Legion has been the role of Judgment in our rotation. I see a lot of people thinking we're supposed to build up 5 Holy Power first then Judgment, and then spend as much Holy Power as possible during a short window of time. However, this is the completely wrong way of looking at it, because it's not up for a short window of time, it's up closer to 90% of the time. What you should actually be doing is judging right away, and keeping Judgment rolling on cooldown. As you build up to 5 Holy Power, there'll be a point on your 4th and 5th Holy Power where you'll be able to see if Judgment is going to fall off or not. If you cannot make it to 5 Holy Power before Judgment falls off, go ahead and use the Spender early. That way, for the 1 second of downtime when Judgment is off, you are building Holy Power and you don't have to worry about spending during the time that Judgment is not on the target. For this example, I'm going to be using the PvP Training Dummy as it activates my PvP template for normalized stats. I have 920 item level, so your haste will differ slightly depending on what your item level is, but right now, my judgment has about 1.19 seconds of downtime. That's less than a global. Right away, I'm going to wings and wake of ashes. 
apply judgment, use a spender, got a blade of justice proc, spender, zeal, blade of justice proc, spender. See, I could have reached 5 holy power right there, but if I did, the judgment debuff would have fallen off, and I would have used the spender without the debuff on the target. Instead, I used the spender at 4 holy power, and continued to do my rotation from there. I hope you guys found this video informative. I do plan on releasing a separate macro guide alongside this video, if you're interested in that. On top of that, I have a sequel to Crusader 7 Act 4 coming out in just a couple of days. So if you're interested in an hour-long PvP Machinima hybrid ridiculous epic, you should subscribe and watch that. And looks like my dance macro stopped working, so I should go to the pipe.